literature appear on the English section of the Hugh Bernanke examination? Well, let me ask you one question. Have you heard of Virginia Woolf? <laughs> yes, it does come on both the first and the third phases of the Hugh Bernanke examination. So you need to be ready for literature questions. We need to understand vocabulary, we need to understand grammar, we need to understand text comprehension, we need to understand how to translate, we need to understand how to write, we need to understand how to be creative. So yes, literature is very important in the English examination for the, for the Hugh Bernanke examination. How should I study for literature for the TPS? Well, that's an even bigger question. We know that Virginia Woolf came on the uh, 2015 examination. And then on the 2016 examination, we didn't see any literature, right? But let's always be aware of everything that has happened in the last 15 or 20 years in the TPS. That may sound like a big chunk of change for you to get uh, your, your studies in order, but if you don't Pay attention to all the different kinds of texts that can come on the examination, you won't be ready, as many people were not ready when Virginia Woolf came on the TPS. So how should you study? Well, let me tell you, the classics. The classics are the best thing to study. They give you great vocabulary. They give you great structural, advanced grammar structure for the English language. And they're going to test your interpretation skills beyond anything that can come from journalism. So if I could just name a couple of authors that I think would be interesting for the first phase, the TPS, maybe, of course we have the Virginia Woolf example, I would say something, if we go back to the 19th century, I would name authors like uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry David Thoreau, Edgar Allan Poe, Lovecraft. Whitman in its style, although it's poetry, and poetry doesn't normally come on the TPS, it's usually more um, uh, uh, prosaic, okay? Uh, and then when we come to the 20th century, authors such as like John Steinbeck, uh, Ernest Hemingway, the African American women writers, Langston Hughes, Maya Angelou, Toni Morrison, oh, I could go on and on. And another great Canadian author uh, that I don't want you to forget about, in fact, let me name just three right in a row who are futuristic, two from England, one from Canada, George Orwell, Aldous Huxley, Margaret Atwood. So, we have lots of things that you can study, and it will definitely help you in your vocabulary, your grammar, and your interpretation questions. And how does literature come on the third phase of the Hugo examination? The third phase, uh, it could come in any section. You could get a quote for the composition. You could get a text for summary. Now, let me put a parenthesis that says, not often. I would say that they're, they're probably not going to demand a literary interpretation in the summary. Could happen, but I haven't seen it happen yet. Where I see it most often is the Portuguese translation. Why? Because you have a knowledge of the Portuguese language. Let's take Orwell, for example, in that one little short story or chronicle that uh, they gave a couple of years back. What they expect you to be able to do is to take that language from English, comprehend it, understand the lexical and the metaphorical references, transfer all of those references into the, in the Portuguese language, excuse me, and make sense of that within the structure and semantic relationships. That's the most important. Sometimes they'll come up with something like they did with, and I would call this even a section of literature, when they took Sergio Buarque de Holanda's uh, O Homem Cordial, and you had to translate two paragraphs into English. I've gone as far as to give uh, Gilberto Freire, to give Darcy Ribeiro. Even though they're not technically literature, they are literary in their language. So it's another thing to pay closer attention to, okay? And you might get a small quote of some kind from an author, like a George Orwell, uh, an Aldous Huxley. A few years back, they gave a quote from Aldous Huxley. And with what we're seeing today in this whole populist and, and 
you know, quote unquote, fascist movements around the world, two novels that they are really focusing on are 1984 from George Orwell and Brave New World from Aldous Huxley. And I'll throw in that third one, which is Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale, because it's sort of the evolution or the, the, the continuation of George Orwell. It is not a rehashing, but a continuation, and the whole idea of a new dystopian world and the feminist perspective inside of that. Very interesting books. So there's some great stuff out there. Uh, anywhere from the classics, I think in the third phase, they probably won't give you 19th century literature unless they take a quote from an author of some kind, which they have done but probably something a little bit more from the 1950s to the present, okay? So there's lots of great literature out there. You want to make sure that you're studying it. Thank you.